As evidenced by the many unfortunate tragedies that have occurred at industrial processing facilities throughout the United States, the potential for danger is serious and ever-present. Workers in these industries may face risks of plant and refinery explosions, fires, and other types of industrial accidents, as the potential for disaster is so large when hazardous chemicals are present. Employers in industries that use them must ensure that dangerous materials are properly controlled. OSHA establishes federal standards to ensure that certain hazardous materials are transported, handled, and used safely. The Process Safety Management, or PSM standard, covers a wide range of industries, including general industry, construction, chemical facilities, and petroleum. Regardless of the industry, PSM standards are crucial to ensuring that workers have a safe work environment. Let's discuss a few basic guidelines for process safety management to get started. Employers must complete a compilation of written process safety information before conducting any process hazard analysis required by the PSM standard. The compilation of written process safety information will help the employer and the employees involved in operating the process identify and understand the hazards posed by those processes involving highly hazardous chemicals. Process safety information must include information on the hazards of the highly hazardous chemicals used or produced by the process, information on the technology of the process, and information on the equipment in the process. Information regarding the hazards of highly hazardous chemicals in the process include toxicity, permissible exposure limits, physical data, reactivity data, corrosivity data, and thermal and chemical stability data. A process hazard analysis, or PHA, is an organized and systematic approach to identifying and analyzing the potential hazards associated with the processing or handling of highly hazardous chemicals. It evaluates and analyzes possible causes and consequences of fires, explosions, releases, and spills of dangerous and flammable chemicals by focusing on equipment, utilities, human actions, and external factors. First, employers must determine and document the priority order for conducting process hazard analyses. Based on a rationale that includes such considerations as the extent of the process hazards, the number of potentially affected employees, the age of the process, and the operating history of the process, the employer must use one or more of the following methods as appropriate to determine and evaluate the hazards of the process being analyzed. What if? checklists, hazards and operability study, failure mode and effects analysis, fault tree analysis, or an appropriate equivalent methodology. Whatever the findings, the organization must address them promptly. If recommendations need to be addressed, the employer has to take action on them promptly and document it, including a schedule of when certain steps have been taken. Additionally, all affected workers have to be notified. All process hazard analyses must be updated and revalidated at least every five years to ensure that the hazard analysis is consistent with the current process. In addition, all hazard analyses, updates, and revalidations for each process and the documented resolution of recommendations are to be kept on file. Employers must develop and implement written operating procedures consistent with the process safety information they've gathered. OSHA believes that tasks and procedures related to the covered process must be appropriate, clear, consistent, and most importantly, well communicated to employees. The process must address at least the following elements. Steps for each operating phase, such as initial startup, normal operations, emergency shutdown, etc. Operating limits, which include the consequences of and ways to correct a deviation. Safety and health considerations, such as precautions to prevent exposure. Safety systems, properties and hazards presented by chemicals used in the process. Operating procedures must be readily accessible to employees who work in or maintain a process to ensure that a ready and up-to-date reference is available and form a foundation for needed employee training. The operating procedures must be reviewed as often as necessary to reflect current operating practices, including changes in process chemicals, technology, equipment, and facilities. 
OSHA believes that implementing an effective training program is one of the most important steps that an employer can take to enhance employee safety. Accordingly, PSM requires that each employee presently involved in operating a process or a newly assigned process be trained in an overview of the process and its operating procedures. The training must emphasize the specific safety and health hazards of the process, emergency operations including shutdown, and other safe work practices that apply to the employee's job tasks. Those employees already involved in operating a process on the PSM effective date do not necessarily need initial training. Instead, the employer may certify in writing that the employees have the required knowledge, skills, and abilities to safely carry out the duties and and responsibilities specified in the operating procedures. How does your company handle process safety? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and we'll see you on the next NASP Info video.